All right. Well, welcome, everybody. This is my first time joining. I'm excited to share some knowledge and experience with you all. So just a little background on me. I'm the SEO manager at Craft. As Hamish said, I've been doing SEO since about 2012. I used to work, I've always done agency SEO. So obviously the bread and butter of agency SEO is link building. Um, and I've I've seen a lot of good and bad link building in my day. <laughs> Just moved to Ireland a little over a year ago from Utah. I was right there in the Silicon Slopes. And uh, just, I've worked with some big brands, uh, GoDaddy, Thrive, and then what all the different companies that you make up what Thrive is now, uh, like Supermedia and Dex Media and all those. I've worked with all those brands in the past. So extensive experience. Excited to get into this with you all. It's a very big subject. And so I think I just kind of want to cover it from a basic level today. And then maybe we can plan on doing a more of a deep dive on some aspects of it that I think deserve kind of their own PBNs and stuff like that. But I think just introducing the topic and, and giving some understanding on basics of it all is, it would be a good place to start today. So first off, if you watch YouTube and... <laughs> You know, talk to a lot of people that are doing SEO nowadays. A lot of people will either say link building is dead or they don't see the value in it or they say it's too risky or, and then there's a lot that, you know, they say do it, but then what they say to do isn't necessarily correct uh, and whatnot. So I'm just going to kind of give just what I've seen work, I know doesn't work and kind of what to look out for. Obviously, you know, back in 2012, when I started SEO, I pretty much link building was king. Content became more of a score. All you really needed was basic optimization on a page and then some good links and you were, you were good to go. And then Penguin 2.0 hit that created a bit of a mess. The company I was working for at the time, there's a lot of cleanup that had to be done for our clients in terms of detoxing and reevaluation of how we perform link building and everything. What I learned in that time frame was what the company did really well to recover. They never got hit by any other updates after that was because they went down to a basic level where basically the attitude became, look, whatever we expect from our client site, we should expect from the sites we're linking to or linking from. So that that kind of became the viewpoint and and the strategy was like okay if we want our client site to have really good content and we want our client site to uh, have good interaction and traffic and everything like that we should expect the same from the sites we're linking from and so that's kind of been even just from there that's kind of the backbone of of good link building is, is that that basic level just understanding that where you want your client site to be is what you need to be linking from you know, obviously content is vitally important. And from a link building perspective, it's still vitally important. But let's talk about how Google thinks the internet works, right? In Google's mind's eye, people create really good content. Then people come and read that content. And then they mention that content in other places. They refer to that content in their own content creation, et cetera. And this magical thing just happens and people get backlinks and, and websites grow naturally. But the reality is, especially for businesses, most businesses, that's never going to happen or it's going to be very rare and a temporary spike in their, you know, in the interactions with their traffic and with their increases in, in impressions and, and traffic to the site. If you want to get down to it, any link building is against the Google guidelines. It's just, it is, it's black hat SEO. It, really it's gray hat SEO if it's done properly, but it's not something that Google is okay with, but it's necessary because generally backlinks aren't going to happen on their own. But if you exercise caution and you're careful on how you perform backlinking and basically have a very high standard for what you want to link back to your site, it negates a lot of the risk. So let's kind of talk about some of the different types of backlinks out there. Now there are literally hundreds of types of backlinks. I'm just going to go over the ones that I found to be the most valuable and what their purpose is. You know, your strongest backlinks to shred out the gate are going to be backlinks that have good content around them, that are content-driven backlinks. But Google is smart enough to recognize that if that's the only type of links you're getting, that obviously something's unnatural, something's being manipulated, and that, and that can harm your SEO as well. So we have guest posts and articles. Uh, these are basically the real meat of SEO, right? These are they have good content around them. If you're doing it right on niche relevant websites that are gaining their own traffic, you know, have the potential to even through that article bring traffic to your site as referral traffic. So that's, you know, in a nutshell, there's going to be the, the backlinks that are going to provide the most value to your website. Beyond that, there's aged article inclusion links. So these are similar in the, in the sense that you're looking for good articles and blogs about the subject matter you want to be relevant for, you know, whether whatever your keyword focus is, you're trying to gain a, a backlink inserted into those articles, basically working with sites, just, you know, saying, hey, hey, you know, I noticed you don't have a reference for this point. I provide this service or this product. You know what I mean? This Here's my expertise or a blog I wrote about this or whatever. You know, would you be willing to include a backlink as a reference? So those are kind of, those are your content-driven link types. Now there's a few others out there, but those are the most common, right? 
Next is article comments. So this is where you're finding blogs and articles and then just making a comment in the comment section and including backlink within that comment. Now, the problem with these types of links is they have to be accepted by the producer of the content or the website themselves. And so looking at best case scenario, getting 20% of these links actually sticking or actually getting published. But when they do get published, they do carry quite a bit of value. Next is directories and profiles. The key purpose of these is really to provide uh, diversity. These are backlinks that are easy to obtain. There's no harm in, in Google even recognizing that you're seeing oh, uh, Dagan, sorry, you're not, you're not sharing your screen, I don't think. I was just thinking that. Oh, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Can you share now? Or? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, can so you can see actually when I put articles and guest posts here, something I did want to make sure I mention is so, right, the caveat is that with all the positives that can come from a good, you know, content driven backlink from a guest post or something like that, they also are the ones that are going to carry the most risk. If they're not done correctly, it, nothing will bring you down faster than having, you know, a, a backlink from a spammy blog or guest post site. Directors and profiles, again, the idea there is that they are essentially going to be providing the link diversity. So think of your backlink portfolio like an investment portfolio. You have your key investments that you're putting most of your money in, but everyone, but you don't put all your eggs in one basket. You diversify, you invest in multiple things. It's like that with link building. Google is smart enough to recognize that if somebody is just getting really powerful backlinks, that they're ob it's obviously BS. The only manual action I've actually ever seen for 10 plus years has been someone actually just was doing consistently just building really, really high quality links to their website. Um, and they got nailed with a manual action. So things have to look natural and organic to Google. And like I said, you can't, there's only so much gaming of the system that can be done. Now, another big aspect is like watching the rollout of the links you're building, you know, are you doing too many at once? They're doing too many in, you know, within a one month time frame or two month time frame. Like there's a, you have to really analyze kind of what's going on in the space for your niche to make sure that you're not overstuffing, you know, that like, it's not going to look totally unnatural that all of a sudden overnight, you're going to have, you know, 50 plus really awesome backlinks just pop up and, and Google be like, what the heck's going on? You know what I mean? Back into this, uh, we already covered article comments, directory and profiles. Again, those are just create that diversity. Infographic submissions. These, I remember when these were, were new, probably five or six years ago, were kind of a, a new attempt in SEO and everyone was very excited about them and they didn't really quite pan out to be as potent in terms of, of giving authority to a website as everyone had hoped, but they are still valuable. What I find tends to be of most value is the description given for the info infographic rather than the infographic itself. So if you give a good description, like 100 words with good keyword inclusion, uh, generally those those can provide some good value as well. And then bookmarks. Now, bookmarks this is this funny one because a lot of people say don't even waste your time with it. Um, obviously, they're not a very potent link in terms of direct transfer of authority to your website per se. But where I found that they provide a lot of value is you actually utilizing them, targeting your own guest posts and articles that you've created for link building, getting those bookmarked actually tends to help those provide more value to your site. So that's where bookmarking really comes comes into play with link building. Now there are a lot of, like I said, there's a lot of other link types. Uh, all of them have their pluses and minuses. These are just the ones that over the years have been consistent. And so they're the ones I'm, I'm kind of focusing on here. The, what is it called? PBNs? Can we go a little, into a little bit more about that? I mean, I know that there's a lot that goes into it, but how do you analyze of what's good and what's bad? How do you know what's good and what's bad? Yeah, you'll have to communicate with the owners because what you'll need to determine is, first of all, what was the purpose they set up the PBN for? Where they're trying to get basically just build up a network of, of company links just to gain revenue through it, ones that are built out for that with that in mind generally are the more dangerous ones. But like, how do you, you tell which ones are which? This is one you, you really want to look for the ones that are actually where it's going to sound bad and counterintuitive, but the ones that are built for SEO um, because they have to be built a certain way. The questions you want to ask is one, you'll want to see, okay, was each blog set up on a different server? Because that's key. And then, you know, on with a different IP and you know what I mean? So there's no connection between the blogs. The second is the quality of content. You know, are they all producing... <laughs> So no, each one is set up on a different server, meaning like your web host, you are an individual server. Yeah, each blog being hosted differently, being like there's you can't have them connected at all. They need to be completely like look like they're their own isolated blog or business rather than being connected to anything else. Like they that's essentially they have to look like they're just a good site on their own, basically. Um, huh. a generally a good way that the companies do this when they're building out a PBN is they will find good age domains and build the blog there and then buy other their related age domains and, and refer them back, through, redirect them back. And then on top of that, it's just, you know, getting, they'll initiate, like before they start selling links for that blog, they'll build it up themselves by creating really good content 
and continuing to do that, they'll nurture it themselves and build and create, continue to create good content for all of their different blogs. So that way it's not just the guest posts getting posted, but it's also their own content. They're not so antsy to make money with their PBNs that they're backlinking more than they're getting links in. Generally, the balance needs to be that there's more links coming to their websites and going out. And then again, those, those same warning signals, you know, if you see traffic on their sites, like it's not just a good, you know, DR score from Ahrefs or DA score from, from SEMrush. It's like there's actually traffic coming to the site. Then you know that like, okay, this Google's going to see it as more of a legitimate site because it has its own traffic margins. People actually come and read the articles, read the blogs, they interact with the links, you know what I mean? And that's, that is going to signal to Google that it's a trustworthy site, right? It's basically the same rules that apply to your site apply to theirs. So just look for the same expectation, like what you want your site to be in terms of SEO, look for that in the sites you get backlinks from. This is going to sound really naive, but can you get a high domain rating without having traffic? Oh yes. That's so really? many do. Yeah. When you start pushing out and actually looking to, to build your backlinks, you're going to find so many sites out there that have massive DR scores of like 60, 70, 80, even, you know what I mean? And uh, so they sell you all these things. Oh yeah. You know, and then they'll want to charge you $150 a link or whatever. You look at the traffic score and it's a zero and essentially is that that's doing the niche you. that they're in though. Like, can you pay somebody to give you <laughs> Good domain rating. I don't know. It's not, it's not necessarily pain. It's just kind of gaming. There's different ways they can game the system to pump up that score. Because you think about it this way, DA score, DR score, those are coming from third-party sites. They're not coming from Google. And it's their best estimation as to how Google views or gives an authority score to a website. If Google was to actually give an authority score, what would that look like? Anything like that, it's it, you can game it, right? Because essentially, I mean, if you think about SEO in a nutshell, it's kind of gaming Google system. What they figure out generally is like, okay, what aspects can they influence the these DR scores, they can pump that up. And then it, it's a sales pitch. It's all about selling that site then to get backlinks or to give backlinks to people. That, that's an actual why traffic is so important is just because that's that's the biggest signal to Google that it's a legitimate site and not just a BS. You know what I mean? They're not doing anything spammy or anything that's going to potentially harm your site down the road. So what should you pay for backlinks? So this is, and this is a whole, we can do even a whole conversation on this because generally what I look out for, again, because I, I move very cautiously with all of this. So when I'm reading reaching out to a site and, and initiating that conversation, I always approach them as a freelance writer, not as an SEO. And so I just say, hey, look, I'm just trying to get some stuff published for my portfolio, da, 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 da. You know what I mean? Can, would you be interested in publishing my blog? If they have, a, if they say that, oh, like they'll give a publish, they want a publish fee, it's not too expensive, it's pretty reasonable, then I usually feel comfortable. But if they say, oh, if they immediately get an email back and it's like, oh, we charge X amount for a backlink, like per backlink or whatever, then they're a link farm and you don't want anything to do with them. Because chances are, if they're being that open with it and an email, email with you. They're probably not following all the guidelines very closely and they're running the risk of, of being nailed by Google and, and then everything that's linking from them. So publishing fee is good. Link fee is not. Exactly. It's, it's okay. always a bad idea to approach any website as an SEO. It's always better to approach them as a freelance writer, even provide them a writing sample of something that looks really good. If they if it's harder to earn their trust to publish your content, that's actually good for you because then you know you can trust their site a lot more than the site that's just like ready to throw anything up. So would you approach a competitor? Yeah, potentially. I mean, but, like a like direct competitor. Like direct, okay, well, for, That would be hard it. because you're still going to try to get a sneak a link in there and they're going to see that. If it's like a broad match competitor, you know, that's fine. And I, I will get into that here, actually here as well I'll explain a little bit down the road here kind of some more of the aspects into like guest posting like the site being niche relevant but then that also can apply to broad match niches so like let's say you're trying to rank you know we want to use the law example you know divorce attorney in Los Angeles California or whatever um, you don't necessarily need every blog to be super focused on just family law if it's a general law blog that has you know good articles about family law you're in the clear you know what I mean that's a broad match blog I, the only time I'd avoid it is, let's say it's it's a blog it's a, maybe it's about law but it's all about finance law and like most of the articles are about like filing bankruptcy chapter 13 chapter 7 whatever you know what i mean then that obviously isn't super applicable it's going to look spammy and you don't want it anyway dagan are you talking about tiered linking right now david uh, asked how tiered linking works is essentially is it's you want your guest posts and your articles to be providing as much link juice to you as possible and the best way to ensure that is if you can or if you're providing link juice back to that article, that blog post or that article itself. The way tier linking works is essentially by building up the site that is building you up, you're only providing yourself more value. It's like a trickle of value, right? It starts from the top and trickles down. And that How do you actually do it though? Like, can you give an example of actually doing it? I brought this up when you were talking about the PBNs and like looking for a legit PBN. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like looking for mm -hmm. like legit link opportunities yep. versus places that are just link farms or places that are like 
link circles to low quality sites or what have you. In that regard, like, I mean, you essentially, I have utilized a PBN in the past to do tier linking as well. If I found like a really good, like we we got an article for, what was it uh, Two Men or was it I suit that where we got the, the from the Fox magazine? Remember that, Hamish? Yeah, I do. Yeah. And they have like 12,000 followers on Instagram as well. But yeah, yeah. Yeah. And what, what we ended up doing is, the, is then, because that link was also, it was providing quite a bit of traffic straight. It was to Two Men, to Two Men itself at the time. And so I, a, a couple of the other links I went and did is I actually found some PBNs that I trusted and got them to link back to our article in the Fox magazine as well and it provided even more value you know for a couple more months type of thing I mean continue to provide value now but like in terms of like traffic and everything it provided even more value so you can if that's what you're asking you can utilize a PBN as well in tier link building um, but then just realize you're going to have to create an article that's like one more separation away from the article you had originally created so it's like the further out you get the more broad the information needs to be still needs to be relevant but more broad Okay, I, I had never thought of it that way, but I can visualize like a funnel of specificity when you're talking yep. about the tiered links. So thank you. That's very helpful. Really, we need to do a training on how to properly scan and search for sites to link to, the guest posts and stuff to acquire, because there's a whole like methodology to that. I can go over it briefly actually now. So generally first approach, and this is just kind of, so you can start dabbling in it and get a, an idea kind of scraping the surface, is let's think of a keyword, any keyword. Someone throw something out there for me. Black tie attire for men. So. And the indicator there, right for us, right? or you can do guest post or there's several other variations you can do. And we can search through here and just kind of see, sorry, Business Insider India. They see right there that they have a right for us, sharewell.org. So let's check this one out here. That's some information. Looks like they cover a, bunch, a couple of different niches. This is a very broad, and most likely this is part of a PBN just looking at it. I'm not necessarily counting this one out yet. Scan through it a little bit. Just kind of see what it's all about. Uh, said they're right for us, but I'm not seeing it here. So I want to see their policy, their publication policy. Yep, there we are. All right. Now this is where we're going to get an idea of who they really are. All right. Interesting enough. So it's mostly from Oxford, which might be something we still can BS. <laughs> Just depends on who we're talking to at the end of the day. So now we want to validate whether this is actually going to be a site worth linking to or linking from. Go here. We use Ahrefs just because it's just the one I prefer for several reasons. Uh, I mean, SEMrush is SEMrush is fine if that's what you're used to. Just looking at this, obviously, this is an estimation. If Ahrefs is saying there's 2.4 thousand in traffic, then they're at least getting some traffic, and then a DR of 64. So right there, I'm trusting this a bit more than I normally would. I'm actually, I, my initial impressions was it's a PBN, but looking at it now, it may not be, may or may not be. Thinking it's a PBN still just because of all the different niches offered, but I'm not seeing any red flags. Now, red flags and niches you'd want to look out for, and they're not necessarily bad things, but it's just because they're just things that Google tends to flag more often. Uh, Bitcoin is one, uh, gambling, you know, uh, adult websites, things like that. Uh, those, you kind of want to avoid blogs, unless you're trying to rank for those type of keywords, you kind of want to avoid blogs that are mentioning those items just because they're a higher risk in terms of, of spam score and having problems with Google. Next steps then is I would then reach out to this email and I just copy and paste that in. I have a, an alias email that I've set up and then I would write out and say, hey, I'm a freelance writer. I've been, you know, studying or whatever at Oxford or whatever. It's like I have a I'd like to write an article on men's attire. You know, here's a sample of some of my writing. I'd send them the sample and be like, would you be interested in publishing this? If so, like, you know what, it, could you give me any pointers on, on what you'd like to see or not to see within the article, et cetera. And they'll generally write back. They're usually very friendly. This is what we'd want to see. This is how many words. These are, you know, we'll need at least three images that you own the rights to or whatever. And then they, they give you kind of the guidelines and you say, okay, go, you write the article, you include those guidelines, send it back to them. Is this, you know, what do you think of this? And then they might send back and be like, hey, yeah, if you could tweak this or we don't like this wording or yeah, we don't like where your link goes. Is there a different URL you can link to or whatever? You know what I mean? And and then fine tune it to what you need it to be. Once you get approval, uh, always get a timeline. Just be like, hey, look, you know, I need a timeline of when this is going to publish because some have a backup of of link of uh, articles are going to publish. They can only publish so many at a time or else it'll hurt their indexation. So you know, they'll be like, all right, it may be two weeks or whatever. And you say, okay. And then just check on it. Once they said it should publish, make sure it got published. Like I said, we could do a whole evening just training on, do, on this <laughs> as a subject itself just uh, scraping data and you know what are variations of this keyword that we could also search for like you know tire for a wedding or tire for a funeral or you know what i mean there's so many different variations uh, that you could also search for and then also variations in the text here the quoted text write for us guest post uh, be, you know become a writer there's so many different that you can include there as well where you're scraping for sites to, just to broaden your results of what you're getting here would well, you not recommend doing something like i don't know scraping this result finding all of their emails and sending a mass email does that kind of thing not work very well. 
And it doesn't work very well. You'll get a very low response rate to the good from the good sites just because they're they get that that happens to them all the time. So what they're looking for is something that's very clearly written by hand that has good information about you. You know, this and again it can be BS information. You can set up a, a persona for yourself as this as this writer, right? I created a LinkedIn using my wife's name and everything <laughs> to create this persona of this writer. Um, just because then it was it sold better, right? And then when they check into it or whatever, they look into me, they they were seeing this persona of this person that is a free freelance writer that you know writes these articles and whatnot it literally is just the back and forth it's a song and dance because if they send something back they want a response you know what i mean they want to see that you're a real person not a bot not you know just pulling data that's why this is the manual process for this yields the best results both in terms of quality of site and in responses okay yeah that makes sense no, you got any more secret strategies for us? Yeah, have you got any more of these little like write for us things? <laughs> really, really yeah, right, that's gold, dude. And I'm wondering, okay, have you, yeah, like, do you have any more of those, Dagan, that you could show people just quickly? Like, not not specifically that, but any more really quick tips and tricks that can just instantly lead to backlinking opportunities for people. The PBNs. What's gonna be exciting there is, let's say you find a good PBN. Be wary of the sites that are like, hey, yeah, here's the charge for a link. Now, there's a follow up question to that because you can see if they are. A, a legitimate PBN that can actually provide you with some great results. The response you give back is okay. That's interesting. You know, I'm 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 okay with with getting a backlink. Do you have any other sites you can send me that you also for different niches that you also can publish on? And then generally they'll send you a book of business, right? They'll send you a, a spreadsheet with all these different sites that they have set up in their PBN and all the different niches. They're going to have their own authority score. It's usually pumped up a little bit, and their own traffic scores are usually pumped up a little bit. So then go and double check it. But if it looks like they're all clean, look at every site that you're being interested in linking from if they're all clean they're all well maintained the content is good and interesting it's not just crap just being pumped on there um and those scores are adding up you know the the dr score it coordinates with correlates rather with the the traffic you know what i mean and you can think okay that's you at that point, you have a good estimation that that's an okay PBN to use. They've done it right. And then you can follow up, like, hey, I know this is a PBN. Google has some strict guidelines about this. Are you setting, I just want to be cautious before I buy any links from you. Are you, have these all been set up on, on very, you know, various servers, you know, on unique IPs? Are these, you know, is there no connection between any of these sites? And they'll respond. If the ones that know what they're doing will tell you, yeah, yeah, it's, it's all done clean. They'll even list out a few things that, you know, to make, let you know that it's been done clean. Um, and then the ones that don't know what they're doing, they will act either in Salted, or or they won't respond or they'll say oh yeah it's fine you know and they won't give you any details then be cautious because it's clear they have no idea what they're talking about and it probably has been done wrong but then if you get that pbn you have they find the golden pbn you're off to the races right so you if can, you if you if you wanted to find a pbn right now Hagen, would you do the same thing that you did before or is there something yeah. else that you would do yeah you do the you exact do same the... thing it would just spend on on the response like you get from the, whoever the editor is that emails you back i said if they're a legitimate business or even a legitimate blog they're going to want to know that they're interacting with a real person. So the more of that real person you can show them, the better it is for you. What's a good domain rating for and traffic? I mean, like, for example, I mean, like this is a high traffic keyword that you're looking at right now. I think initially they would come in probably saying 100 to 150 dollars US to publish an article with them. I would bounce back and say, hey, for freelance writer, that's quite a bit. Uh, you know, would you take 75? You know what I mean? And then usually they'll bounce back with number, you know, uh, maybe 95 or whatever. And like, okay, you know kind of thing just based on their how high the dr score is and then the traffic as well well what's an acceptable dr score acceptable dr score is anything higher than yours really well that's not yeah. hard to beat yeah exactly <laughs> and i wouldn't even worry too much about the dr score if there's a lot of traffic and they're like a dr5 who the crap cares about the dr score at that point they have the traffic margins to back it up and it's niche relevant you're good to go okay. would you say that even just having niche relevance is better than having no backlinks or is there no point in getting pretty good content niche relevant links if there's no traffic and there's no dr score the traffic and the dr score to a certain extent are more important i mean it, it really is all important um because you also if you're getting a backlink from like like that one we saw wasn't too bad they had a couple of different niches but they could all be easily related to each other but if it's like one that has like 40 niches and most of them have nothing to do with each other it's obviously just a link farm blog you know what i mean it, even if it has traffic you want to be cautious of those just because well you don't have to be cautious of those if they have traffic and the dr score you're usually safe it's just just recognize it's not going to provide as much link juice than a site that is wholly focused on your industry 
industry and think of it as like more like broader than niche think of things related to the industry as a whole so i give an example in, in the train there i was writing up where you know let's say you are a shop that sells fishing tools online right like fishing poles bait whatever you probably are going to find a limited amount of relevant niche related blogs that are just a fishing now those will be the best those are going to provide the most value in terms of relevance but you're also going to find a lot of blogs and stuff like just based like sportsman blogs and like outdoorsy stuff and camping and stuff like that where you're still niche relevant you're still related to that industry it's not as specific as the fishing itself oh yeah that's super helpful that really broadens my ability to like look for links in different places so that's a super helpful thing this is going to always provide the most value anything that's content driven your guest posts and your articles but if you don't have at least some of this other like linking going on it's going to look spammy to google so you know go out and look for directories related either to your service area if you you know if like if you service the us you know look for directories and profiles and business profiles in, in your region based on location because it's usually not super niche relevant sometimes there are actually law is one of the easier ones to find directories for attorneys and stuff like that there are dozens of them out there you know th these aren't going to provide a ton of link juice value but this, they're just going to diversify your link building and so google you know isn't going to flag anything or think that something unnatural is going on and to google it's just going to look like you're getting mentioned more online that's it uh, about the diverse link profiles right do you base it on like what the profile the link profiles of your competitors on page one are or do you have like your own targets that you go for when it comes to having diversity of link types i mean look at them and make sure they're not like if it looks like it was built in like 2007 people just pump their information into it and no one ever visits it probably not going to do you any good but if you can find legitimate like directories and business profile sites you know what i mean like I, mean, I hate to give this one as an example but it, it, it back in the day it was quite valid like the dex one like profile pages like they used to do right if you got you know your your information pumped into there that generally was good you know what i mean and again they're not providing a ton of value in terms of link juice google doesn't really care about them in that regard it just i get it's all about your site being mentioned in more than one place you know what i mean in more than one way you know, it's it's just making it look like it's just overall people are noticing you more. Now let's talk about these article comments because these are awesome because they can actually do provide quite a bit of link value when you can land one and they create that link diversity as well. Now, these have to be kind of taken on very cautiously as well, because if it's obviously you going and leaving the comments, it's your name, then Google's going to recognize that and you're going to get nailed. So don't do that. But if, you know, you can create yourself a persona, you know, get a VPN and rotate things around a little bit. But find some good articles and blogs, even on on competitor sites, I've seen it happen. Competitors generally weren't too happy about it, but it happens. Um, go and leave a comment on a blog like, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, I really learned a lot about this by using this service or whatever, you know, and then they throw a backlink or whatever. You know, if you were, were actually wanting to comment about something that you had utilized or that you knew about previously on a blog, like you're just genuinely providing help to people also reading that blog in the comments that's the way you'd want to post it post it like that leave the backlink and then if it gets published you know what i mean boom that's that, that can actually carry over quite a bit of authority and it gives link diversity as well again because it's it's see that's the one's the most natural for google to feel like you're just coming up more online like people are just mentioning you more Again, all of these, like, I feel like we could do a training on every single one of these and we probably should. <laughs> you know I mean? Like, there's, there's so much to that as well. Like, you know, we can do like the whole process of, of scraping to find uh, the blog specifically for article comments and then creating a persona and, you know, rotating personas because you also don't want to use the same name in multiple sources. Just and a lot of SEO agencies, especially for smaller businesses, this is their bread and butter because it's, it's an easy link to pump out a bunch of them. And then even if you only land three or four in a month, it's going to carry over quite a bit of weight. This is like what a lot of your, SEO companies that are like 250 a month or whatever to rank in your local area. This is what generally where they live and die because they obviously on that budget, they're not going to be able to produce much of that. Can we talk about the, just the link building budget in general? Like I am an agency owner myself and, you know, I have people that want me to rank their sites. I, I don't understand like out of what they pay me, what should I be figuring out for a link budget? Is there a good rule of thumb? So generally I, I, I calculate it all into hours. So it's good to like run a few, maybe for your own site or whatever see how long it takes you to acquire the backlinks you want to acquire for your clients and then round up and so whatever you're charging your clients on the hour that's what it takes to build the backlinks so that's how many backlinks they would get per month follow me uh, again i i would still analyze the time it's taking you um and then just weigh that against the budget there you know whatever you know the retainer is you know what i mean because really at the end of the day it's you don't want it to devour your own money right you don't want to devour your own revenue it really comes down to the level of service you're providing for each client if it's like holistic seo and they're paying thousands 
thousands a month, then yeah, you know, like the sky's the limit, you know what I mean? But if it's, you know, and also it's going to depend on their location. It's going to depend on, you know, the keywords you're going after. It's going to depend on, I mean, the real key to good quality link building and and, and Hamish, I'm sure has already done is, is keyword research. You know, you, you start with your keyword research, make sure with link building, you can focus more on those buyer intent, like focused keywords. Uh, you know what I mean? So like, for example, like, if you are like for the law example given earlier, like let's say you're a family lawyer, a family, you know, family attorney, maybe that's your target term. That's fine to utilize in link building, even if you're not think realistically thinking you're going to rank for it, just because of the overall authority, it's going to help build to your site. You're going to rank for a lot of terms related to that term. And then what you watch is all those related terms in Google search console, see how they're climbing up, you know, in clicks and impressions as you improve in ranking, as you build, get the links out there. And as you build that authority score for your own site, to answer your question, it's hard to answer, not knowing like a full framework of like how you're doing things but i would just anal like i said it really comes down to because it may not charge by the hour but think that you you do work by the hour so you really have to analyze how much time it's taking you to do the link building and that's you know you want to charge that times two <laughs> you know what i mean to make sure you're making up your your costs like okay so call me crazy right but would you be willing to like look at a keyword and and give a rough idea of how you would look at it or something like that yeah sure so like i have a, a prospect right now and like let's use the keyword foundation repair knoxville that's quite good for a local keyword yeah so it's quite competitive but if you also saw there like the top organic keyword is or a top organic result is not a local business and that and this is the frustrating thing because generally that's going to be the case because your, your big boys that have all the money that can, in the world that can pump into this they're always going to rank higher right even on a local level just because they can still play the game of maybe they have a local office or a law office nearby where they're providing the local you know uh, service you know what i mean yeah, so, they might even sell the leads to the local vendors I, i've seen it all for exactly. sure exactly but it's it's not a make or break. Now, things like Angelus, you don't need to worry about it. You're never going to outrank them and it doesn't matter anyway because no one's clicking on that. You, right. you see what I mean? Like the top thing is a yeah. blog. Which I thought was crazy for this volume keyword. It's see, today's homeowner. Not surprising though. I mean, especially if it's a well-written blog. Then I can't. I mean, there's some good call to action in the blog. It's not even a blog. This is actually a, a directory. directory. Very cool. That makes more sense, but that's interesting. Yeah, and this is more common. But this is actually this would be a good directory to try to get yourself put in. 100%. Um, but so there you go. There's how to find a directory right there. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, uh, right. It, it's hard to analyze because you want to analyze the client site as well. Because realistically, you got to look at where they're starting from. If they're starting with a, you know, like let's look at, let's find just like a good. Is this one an actual company? Let's see where. Yeah, Ramjack's going to be like a um, safe flight. You know what I mean? Like a franchise. Let's see where they're starting from just to give us an idea. So DR50. 24K in traffic. So analyze where you're starting from compared to them. Now, obviously ranking top number one, it's not really a realistic goal for anyone. But I generally will say once you're in the top 10, you're in the game. And that's really where you should aim for. Because also the results themselves get so volatile within the top 10. You can't really guarantee a static spot within that top 10. Some searches, it happens, but that's more a fluke. In reality is those searches, they they vet, they move around a lot more than you realize. Um, someone may average in their position often enough that it seems like they're always there. But the reality is, is at any time you can search that and maybe they're two spaces below or one space above or whatever. So being within the top 10, that's when your client is in the game. This one, I mean, obviously this is a big boy. This is, I mean, you just have to be realistic. This is who you're competing against, right? You have to look at the gap you need to make up. So in this case, let's say your client has, you know, say they're not doing too bad. Let's say they have like a DR13, right? And maybe like 1.2K in, in traffic a month. It's like, okay, they're, they're doing all right. They're noticeable. You know what I mean? The potential's there for them to rank. You're going to have to make up that DR gap. So in that case, you're going to want to go after a little bit more high authority links, but you don't need to concern yourself with only that, right? Because the reality is, you, you don't, again, you don't have to beat them. You just have to get in the same game. It looks like they're doing some backlinking. They're acquiring new backlinks every month from what we're seeing here, right? Can even look at some of their backlinks, which but we'll do competitor backlinks because that's another valid source of backlinking. I, I didn't cover it in this because it is a massive, massive undertaking just because some of them can be quite buried as well, but we'll, we'll have to do another discussion on that. So with this, like you're looking at, like here we have, you know, like some DR75s on up, but you have to look at, so these are valid links. These are good links because that's content. It's do followed. It'll tell you if it's no followed. You know what I mean? So you have quite a few pretty potent links. Obviously a lot of them are looking. Oh yeah, this site is no joke. I think it's interesting yeah. that you're looking at the root domain rather than like what's actually ranking. Generally, it's going to be the same. Traffic will be lower, but the DR score is going to be based off the root domain anyway. Because if you look at everything else here, it's way lower, but still 720 yeah. legit backlinks to this page is crazy. Although it does yeah. say plus 600, which means like there's a lot of really recent ones and they're probably duplicates or something weird. It could be, or it could be just the last time. This is a problem with Ahrefs right here in a nutshell. It's the last time Ahrefs actually crawled the site or it was brought to their attention, there was only only 100 whatever and then now that 
we've called our attention again and noticed this many more. So that's the flaw with Ahrefs. But I mean, every uh, there's a problem with all these tools is they're given their best approximation and you have to like look at it from that angle. If you look at it like it's a factual, like God-given metric, uh, you'll just be disappointed because at the end of the day, the only thing you can really count on that's giving you accurate information is Search Console. And since we can't access our, our competitor Search Console, this is the best we can do. And would you agree like the more obscure the search gets, the worse you can depend on the metrics? Yes. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Um, I don't ever use it for keyword research as well, just for the same reason it's keyword information is tends to be a little bit, it's crap. I'm, I'm trying to be diplomatic, but it's not good. Um, but uh, what we do use, utilize it for is just tracking our keyword progress. We don't care so much about the search volumes it gives, but we care about, you know, the the month on month improvement of, of keyword rankings for whatever we're targeting with our link building. I mean, with this one, again, it's hard without looking at the client site, but just when you're calculating it, you'll know how many months it's going to take. I mean, generally, if you're being aggressive with your link building, um, you know what I mean? And and you're, you're diversifying uh, and you have the budget to really go after it. I mean, you can expect within six to nine months, you can get them into the game you can get them into the top 10. At that same time in tandem, you're going to have to be producing good content, like good blogs that are also, you know, bringing it because, it, you know, a major ranking factor is click through and traffic itself. So if you're not getting that traffic from other sources, it's going to be hard to be competitive and rank, right? For these more competitive terms. If you have it in tandem, you have a link building going that's providing, you know, your trust with Google that's helping Google to recognize you as an authority in the industry. And then you have the blogging going on and that building up your topical authority and getting you in the game in terms of question-based search queries and and just driving you know getting lots of clicks and impressions and getting people to the site those things in tandem no matter what they're gonna i mean it may take longer than you want but it's gonna get you onto that first page thank you so much dagan that was that was amazing i learned a lot i'm sure everyone else learned a lot too we'll have you on again soon maybe next week might not be next week depends i i thought that was one of the best sessions we've had so far and it's not something i talk about on my channel very often thanks everyone for coming and um, we'll see you we'll see you next time